Hi, and welcome to the Home Assistant How-To with BG Tinker. Today, we will work on loop data integration. First, we will build a sensor, then we will program it, we will configure it, and we will integrate it in the Home Assistant. We'll start in 10 seconds. Today's video will have a couple of parts. And those parts will be first to build DIY sensor. Next step is to integrate it with the worldwide network that collects all the data. And third and the final step will be to integrate it in the Home Assistant. So let's get started. Let's look what we need for this Luftdaten sensor. Main thing, of course, is this NOAA PM sensor. We will be connecting DuPont wires here. Then we need this DHT22 humidity and temperature sensor. Also, we will be using those pins here. We need node MCU. According to the documentation, version should be CH341. Unfortunately, my CH341 never arrived, so I had a spare a node MCU CP2102 and I will be doing this one, I will be using this one. We need one DuPont cable with four pins or four wires, so four times a female wire and one DuPont cable for the DHT sensor with the three wires. We will be also needing a USB cable. This one will be used for the uh, charging. We need a USB charger. As you can see my cable is short but for this video it should be sufficient. And according to the documentation you should also use HT high temperature tubing, curved tube, as you can see here in the picture. But since I'm in the quarantine or we are in a lockdown I cannot get my hands on this tubing and that's why I printed this case. So this case will be used for the housing of a PM sensor. It's going here. This node MCU will go here. Here is the opening for the air intake. Unfortunately, I do not have silicon tube 6 millimeters in inner diameter for this. So I will be just popping it up here. And you also will need probably some zip ties. I will be providing a link, you can always check it down in the description. So first step of course is to program this node MCU. So let's get cracking. You should now open web page for the loop.n info. On this page we need to go to the section called import firmware. And here you can read steps necessary to import the firmware to your node MCU. As I said, there are two versions of the firmware. The original web page is pointing to the model uh, version 3, but as I said earlier, I'm using version CP2102. In order for you to download the firmware, first thing you have to do is you have to download respective drivers for this Node MCU. If you still haven't, I will be downloading this one. In the folder where you downloaded the drivers, just Click on the install and this should be it, okay? Next step is to download the firmware flasher. As I'm using the Windows operating system, I will be downloading this one. So let me try and connect my Node MCU to the computer. It's connected. The flasher has recognized it. And let's press upload. And this should be it. The firmware is now installed. And next step is, of course, to put everything together. So let's jump back to that. Now that the Node MCU is 
programmed, we should proceed with the wiring diagram. As you can see on the screen, this is the default wiring diagram for the CH341, but as I said, I'm using version CP2102, so I have to do a little bit different wiring. First, let's connect DuPont cables here. Okay, let me just prepare them. So, these three here are going into the first three holes. Okay, and the fourth we are skipping one and going into the this pin. So this is one, two, three, we skip the fourth and we go to fifth. Okay. And let's connect the cables now to the node MCU. So we have here D1 and D2. These will be brown and black. And we will connect them here. Okay. Then we have the gray one. It will be going here on the V. And the white one will be going one, two, three, four, five. So we have one connection here on the three, we have one on VN, and we have D1 and D2 for the node MCU. Let's take the other cables and these will be used for DHT. So they will go into the first two pins. So those two pins. And this one will go on the, it's going for D5. So we have this on D7. So we have first, second, three are empty and on fourth from this side we have here. And in terms of the sensor, this goes here. This is this one. Far right goes here. This is the D1. And this goes here. So we now have everything connected. Make sure that all the wires are connected securely. Next thing is to take this sensor and put it in a housing. I will hot glue this a bit later. Okay. Let's connect power. The cables are a bit short. And we can now close the box. Okay. So this is it. And of course, next step is to connect this into the outlet. After you connect it to the power outlet, you have to connect to the access point that will be started on this device. On your mobile phone, select the new access point. In this case, this is the one with the number. You will be presented with the list of all the 
access points in your area, select your home access point and type in your password. You can for now leave all the other settings as they are. You can of course change the firmware version. This one is in the German if you by mistake selected local node bin. You can see here all the modules that can be attached. Uh, the system normally finds the correct modules by itself, but if you have some specific module, you can select it here. You can here change the language for the firmware update. So if you, for example, uh, install the wrong language, you can select it here and by the next update, it will be running on the language of your choice. After you press save, you will be presented with the list of all the options and configuration options. And next step is to access your sensor by typing the IP address. Uh, you should check the IP address either on your router or using some IP scanning tool such as Angular IP Scanner. And it takes a bit for the sensor to get the first information. I think it needs two minutes before it starts reading. But after two minutes, you will receive the initial values for the sensor. And this should be it. Let's go back to the computer. And now, after we have configured our loop button sensor, next step that we should do is we should check that everything is working okay. Let's click on the sensor data. And here we can search for the name of the sensor. We should press Ctrl F for search. And here we should type the number ID number from our sensor. So for me, this was 3846483. And we are now sure that our sensor is working and sending the data because we have it listed here. So let's click on this SDS. This is the particle matter sensor. And we will see graph here showing us data for the uh, sensor we installed. As you can see, the sensor is not listed on loop.info. The sensor is not registered. So next step for us is to register it. Let's open this new web page. And here let's register. We have to fill in the email address and the password. Let me do it quickly. And now let's press register. It can take some time to receive the email confirmation. Let's try to log in. Okay. Let's confirm my account. And we are in. Okay. So let's register new sensor. Sensor ID. This is the same number that we can see on top of our sensor. So this is ID number. Once again, it's 3846483. Let me quickly fill this information in. Okay, I fill this in. So we have sensor ID. I've left the board the same as it was here. I've given the sensor a name, written the address. I've ticked the box because sensor is currently indoor. Uh, this is a distance of the sensor from the ground, so it will be like this. Sensor location relative to traffic, 1 means garden site, 10 means sensor in house uh, directly on the street. Small description. Hardware configuration, okay. Let's check the address here. Okay, it pulled everything nicely. And let's save the settings. So now we have this sensor configured and running here. Let's check data. At this point, the sensor is configured. So as you have seen, we are receiving data both internally inside our house, uh, meaning we can access it via the IP address. This is the map of all the sensors currently available. So let's go and check Zagreb. And as you can see, this is the center of the town and we said that we and we said that we didn't want the sensor to show exact location. So we have this um, 
hidden by moving it a little bit further away than it really is. Let's click on the name of the sensor or the box and it says that this is indoor sensor and currently we have a value of 11 for PM10 and if we change here to PM2.5 and click here we have a value of 7. You can also check temperature 20 degrees and humidity 27% and last step here is to configure the integration to home assistant there are two ways to do integration one is of course to go to integrations click the plus sign and configure it here but as always I'll be going through Visual Studio Code or configurator if you're still using it let's open Visual Studio Code And here let's go to configuration YAML file. Let's first put comment here. Luft Dutton, so we know what integration we are working on. First thing that we have to do is we have to declare the name of the integration. This will be Luft Dutton. Next thing that we have to declare here is a sensor ID, sensor ID. And in order to get the sensor ID, let's go back to the map. On the map here, you have the sensor number. So this will be 44344. And let's type 44344. Next variable is not mandatory, but it enables you to show the data on the map inside your home assistant. This will be show on map and for test purpose I'll put here true and last part of the configuration for the sensor is to define sensors so it will be sensors and we have to list all the monitored conditions that we want to track so it will be monitored conditions we have couple of monitor conditions one will be p1 this is for tracking the particles that are 10 microns in size next is p2 this is for tracking particles that are 2.5 microns in size temperature and humidity if you have attached sensor that tracks pressure you can also put here pressure this part of the configuration should be now done save your changes if you're working in a configurator or in text file and let's go to configuration server control check configuration and if everything is okay we should now restart our server And our server is back online. At this point, everything should be done. We could, we should go to overview and let's add our sensors here. So in weather, configure UI, and we can add entities. It will be luftdatum1 and luftdatum2 and save. And at this point, sensor is configured you are receiving data from the sensor uh, both for p1 and p2 or for p10 and p2.5 so one is 13.93 and the other one is 7.78 still in the normal limits if you're having issues with it or if you want to skip uh, downloading each time data from the web there is also additional integration this one is located in the home assistant community store let's click here let's go to integrations and you have here sensor called local loop button sensor press on it this sensor allows you to get the data directly from the sensor without the need to go to cloud to check the data so let us try install it let's press install yes and sensor is installed 
let us just copy this here control C before we restart let's go to Visual Studio Code let's go to sensors and at the bottom of the sensors file we will paste this data from the Home Assistant Community Store installation okay we have to remove this one what you need to do here to tweak it to your configuration first of all you have to change it to your IP address if you do not know the IP address of the sensor you can either use some tool such as angry IP scanner to check all the IP addresses or on your router you can check the DHCP server for the lease for this IP address I believe mine is 104 name of the sensor will be indoor and I will leave those two conditions or four conditions P1 and P2 for particles, temperature and humidity. And this is it. Let's go to configuration, server control check configuration and let's restart our server once more. Our server is back online. So let's go back to overview. Let's go to weather. And let's see if we can add this data for the local sensor. Entities. So we have indoor PM10, indoor PM2.5, indoor humidity and indoor temperature. And let's press save so as you can see we have those values both received from the server and those values here that are internal from the sensor there is difference in this data between the two sensors be because I believe that this internal or local integration doesn't take um, in effect differences between the air pressure and humidity and in the air with the quantity of the particles while this online version calculates so i believe that this is the reason why there is difference between the Luftdaten information and your internal indoor sensor okay there is also possibility to do something what i did i created a sensor that has minimal trigger value so i trigger my notifications if the sensor goes above the threshold and there is a trend of increase so i'm tracking the data difference is it uh, rising or falling and i'm also tracking it is it above or below some threshold and if it matches all two criteria i get notification on my google home devices but this is it for this home assistant how to it was a little bit longer than you probably are accustomed to if you did like this video please give me a thumbs up if you have any kind of a comment or a suggestion for this year's or any other video, please leave it down in the comment section. If you still haven't subscribed, please subscribe and hit the bell button. And I'll be seeing you next time. Until then, bye bye and have fun.